Today we're going to do two sections at once. It's section 8.8 .8 and 8.9. We're going to be factoring perfect squared binomials and trinomials. But before we even do that, let's just review a bit. Um, what is the first type of factoring that we ever learned? GCF. GCF. So if you had like 2x minus 4, you could pull out the GCF of 2, right? Leaving you uh, x minus 2 on the inside. That's one method, pulling out the GCF. That's the first type of factory method we learned. That's the first type of factory method you should always try. Um, in addition to that, or not in addition, but after that, we also learned how to factor by grouping. That's when you have four terms, and you split them into two groups, and then you pull out the GCF of each group, and then you pull out that common binomial. Um, and then after that, we also learned how to factor quadratic trinomials that have the A value of 1. For example, if I have uh, x squared uh, plus 2x um, minus 24. The a value is 1, um, which means we could jump right into this factored form format because x times x, x times x is x squared, right? If you had a number out here, you can't jump right into the factored form format. You actually have to do that multi-step process. Uh, but anyway, when you don't have a number out here, when the a value is 1, you could set this up, and then you simply think, what times what is your c value, negative 24, that if you combine together is your b value, positive 2. And you may have to make a list. I always recommend making a list so you could see all the possible multiples of negative 24. And I always start with 1, like 1 times negative 24 is negative 24. Or 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. Or uh, 3 times uh, negative 8 is negative 24. Or 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. And out of all those pairs of numbers, when you combine them, which one gives you the middle value positive 2? Well, when you combine these guys, it'll give you a negative 23, right? 1 plus negative 24 is negative 23. That's not it because that's not a negative 23. Uh, and you start combining them. 2 and negative 12, that's a negative 10. That middle value is not negative 10. This gives you a negative 5. That middle value is not negative 5. This gives you a negative 2. 4 plus negative 6 is negative 2. And we do have a 2 right here. But it's a positive 2, not a negative 2, which means we have the right numbers, just the wrong signs. That should be a minus 4 and a plus 6. And that's exactly what you plug into your blank spots right there, a minus 4 and a positive 6. This was factoring quadratic trinomials that do not have an a value of 1. And we also learned uh, how to factor quadratic trinomials that actually do have an a value of 1. So I'm going to go to this uh, part of my notebook, and I want you guys to go to your notebooks and copy this warm-up question. This one is a quadratic trinomial, and the a value is not 1, it's 9, okay? So copy that down and work with me through this. Uh, we know this multi-step process to be able to factor this quadratic trinomial. Step 1, anybody remember step 1? A times C. Step 1 is multiply A times C. A is 9, C is 4. So you really have 9 times 4, which is really 36. Step 2 is to make a, make a list. Excellent. Make a list, and we're talking about a multiplication list of the answer from step 136. So how could I get 36? It's 1 times 36. It's 2 times 18. It's 3 times 12. By the way, if you don't know your multiplication tables, you could get a calculator and go 36 divided by 3, and it'll give you 12. 36 divided by 2, it'll give you 8. And then he could, like, continue. 4, 4 times 9 is 36. 5 doesn't work. 6 times 6 is 36. Those are all the possible ways of multiplying numbers together to give you 36. Now, which pair of numbers, when you combine them, like 36 plus 1, that gives me 37. Is that middle value B a 37? Heck no, it's a negative 12. So it's not the first one. That's 37. It's not 37. It's negative 12. 8 plus 2 is 20. The middle value is not 20. Uh, 12 plus 3, or 3 plus 12 is 15. That middle value is not 15. Uh, 4 plus 9 is uh, 13. That middle value is not 13. Uh, 6 and 6 is 12. That middle value is 12. But yeah, you're right. you got to change both signs because it's a negative 12, not a positive 12. So you change them both. And that's going to be 3 and 2. So the next step is you could either convert this trinomial to a four-term polynomial, replacing this negative 12x with negative 6x minus 6x, giving you four terms instead of three terms, so you could factor by grouping. But I showed you a quicker method, which was jumping right into your factored form format, parentheses, 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 where on the first part of each binomial, right here and here, 
belongs an AX term. A is 9, and of course we're dealing with X's, so AX and AX will be 9X and 9X. Okay? And then, well, and then we also take the pair of numbers from step 2 and plug them into the blank spots. Right? So we're going to take that minus 6, put it right here, take that minus 6, put it right there. That's step 3. Now step 4 was that magical ste step of just dividing each binomial by 2. Or not by 2, by whatever you can. Right? If you could divide both by 2, go for it. If you could divide both by 3. But you want to divide by the biggest value possible. And a 9 and a 6, you could reduce both of them by what? Three. By 3. So if you divide both by 3, you're going to get your final answer, uh, 3x minus 2. And the other one's also 3x minus 2. And there's your factored form answer. Um, and that's what I would like you to type in on quizzes when we have a quiz on this, right? With no spaces between your terms. Um, if you're not sure about it, yeah, you could uh, double check it. Let me double check it by distributing and seeing if it gives us the original quadratic trinomial. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Negative 2 times 3x is another negative 6x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And as you can see, those middle values will, when you combine them, will give you that middle value on the original negative 12. So you do, it, you just verified it. This is the correct factored form. If you're taking a different math class or a test on paper as opposed to the quizzes, another possible answer is, since it's the same identical binomial, another possible answer is to write that binomial with a square up on there, 3x minus 2. So this is just an alternative answer that means the same exact thing as those, that answer right there. Make sense? I mean, it looks nicer, but uh, on quizzes, we're typing in both the binomials, 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. All right, so we understood, we reviewed all the different factoring methods that we've covered so far. Today, we're going to learn a new factoring method. It's a, a, an additional factoring tool in our factoring toolbox. And this uh, new factoring method is um, factoring perfect square uh, quadratic trinomials and binomials, right? Uh, what, what is a perfect square? Good question. What is a perfect square binomial and trinomial? Well, let's begin with this. Uh, the reality is when you have... A standard form quadratic trinomial, if the a value and the c value, if they are perfect squares, you may be able to apply a shortcut that I'm about to show you. All right? So you get, don't copy this down right now. Just uh, listen to me, really understand it, and then I'll tell you what to copy down in a bit. But if your first number is a perfect square, technically this first term, your perfect square, and the last term a perfect square, then you're going to be able to square root each of them and plug them into your answer format. Okay. So first of all, we need to start by understanding what is a perfect square. You guys remember your perfect square number list? One, four, nine, that is right. Perfect square numbers are like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and of course it continues forever. And where does this perfect square uh, list come from? It comes from taking the number 1 and multiplying it with itself. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6, so on and so on, right? And we should also remember that taking the square root of any of these perfect square numbers is a nice perfect answer. What is the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of 100? Okay. What's the square root of 1? one? See? So taking the square root of any of these perfect square numbers ends up being a nice perfect answer. Okay? Um, so if we do have a perfect square number in the front, like check this out. On the question that we just did, we actually have a perfect square number in the front and a perfect square number at the back. So maybe... We're going to be able to use this shortcut of taking the square root of the first term and the last term and then plugging it into our answer format. Again, you're not copying down any notes right now. Just, just, just watch me do this, all right? What is the square root of 9x squared? 3x. So I'm going to put a 3x right there and a 3x right there. And then what is the square root of 4? 2. So I'm going to put the answer 2 right there and the answer 2 right there, okay? 2 right there, 2 right there. And then the only other thing you have to do now is think about the signs that belong here and here. Like, could they both be positive? Heck no. Well, actually, heck yeah, they could because positive 2 times positive 2 gives you the positive 4 at the end. Could they both be negative? Yeah, they could also be both be negative because a negative 2 times a negative 2 gives you that C value of positive 4. But... 
Excellent. So it can't be a plus and a minus. The signs cannot be different because then the middle term would cancel out. I'll show you that in a bit. And uh, yeah, you determine what signs it's going to be based on both of these signs. So we said we want a positive 4 at the end. That's either a positive 2 times a positive 2 or a negative 2 times negative 2. But since the middle term is negative, the best guess is that both of those are negative. It's like a well-educated guess, right? So on these uh, perfect square quadratic trinomials, we still need to double check and actually see if it works. Uh, and we know it does work because we just got that answer 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2, and that's exactly what we got here. So recognizing that your first term and your last term are perfect square terms, square rooting them and plug them into your answer format, it's a lot faster than doing this multi-step process that we did. Now the only time you could do this is if it is a perfect square binomial or trinomial, okay? And of course, the signs are very, very important, okay? Um, so let's verify. So like it, uh, if we wanted to verify, you would just distribute the way we did uh, previously down here. So you had 3x times 3x, 9x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Negative 2 times 3x is another negative 6x. When you combine those two negative 6x's, it will give you that negative 12 in the middle. Anywho, um, the notes that I want you guys to ultimately jot down is uh, this. Sorry about that. Here we go. Technical difficulties. So these are the notes. <clears throat> if you have a quadratic trinomial, ax squared plus bx plus c, and the first term is a perfect square term, that's why I put perfect square right there, the last term is a perfect square term, okay? Then... If you have this situation, then you could do the square root of that a value and then put it with an x. And then you could do the square root of c and put it there. And that'll be your answer format. It says, think about the highlighted signs. Okay, So these are both plus because these were both plus up here. right? If this would have been a plus and this would have been a minus, then these would both be minuses. The other bit of notes I want you to copy down is it might be a perfect square quadratic trinomial or it might be a perfect square, I mean, yeah, trinomial or binomial. What is a perfect square binomial? Uh, other books and other teachers also call them a difference of two squares. Uh, it has to be a minus sign. Okay, that's what I put down here. Must be difference of two squares. It must be a minus sign in order for this to work because the only way that the middle term will cancel out is if you have one plus and one minus on your signs. Now that may be a little confusing, but after we go through several examples, I think it'll be a lot easier for you. So right now, let's copy it down. I'm going to pause it for a couple of seconds. And you might as well copy down these uh, four examples to each of those, and we'll go through them in a bit. So in reality, guys, uh, these are the two sections of the book. Uh, I'm not sure if this one was uh, eight point. Yeah, I think the difference of two squares is 8.8. .8. This is technically 8.8 .8 in the book. And this is 8.9. Quadratic trinomials are 8.9. But we're doing them on the same day because it's technically the same lesson. If you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back, whether it's a trinomial or a binomial, you're supposed to try to square root both of them and plug them into your factored form answer format. Square root both of them, plug them into your answer factored form answer format. And in both cases, you think of signs. So let's jump to the perfect square quadratic trinomials. Now, you don't, you don't have to do square roots here. I mean, the idea is to practice it. But in reality, if there's no number in the front, well, then you could jump right into parentheses, parentheses, x, x, and think what times what is your c value that if you combine together is your b value, right? What times what is 25 that if you add together is negative 10? A negative 5 times a negative 5, right? But the idea... For this particular, we already know the answer, but the idea for this one, since we're practicing perfect square quadratic trinomials, would be like, do we have a perfect square term in the front? Yeah, it's a 1x squared. So what is the square root of a 1x squared? That's an x and an x. Do you have a perfect square term at the back? Yeah, it's 25. What's the square root of 25? It's 5 and 5. And then you got to think of these signs right here. In order for you to get a positive 25 at the end, the final step on distribution, it must be a positive 5 times a positive 5 or a negative 5 times a negative 5. Based on your middle value being negative, that must mean that both of these are negatives. 
And like I said, you're probably thinking, why the heck am I going to do that if I could just think, oh, my A value is 1, X, X, what times what is C that if you add together is B? That's great. I would do it the, the other way also instead of thinking of square roots. But on this guy right here, there is no way to, the only other option is to do this uh, with A times C, right? Um, and then thinking of the list of the multiples of that answer, 36, that combined together to give you B. And, and you know, that's a long process itself. But when you look at your first term being a perfect square term and your last term being a perfect square term, you could square root the red 9x squared. What's the square root of the red 9x squared? 3x. So you put 3x as the beginning of both binomials. What's the square root of 4? 2. Put a 2 right there, 2 right there. And what signs belong in here? Plus, plus, plus because the whole thing's positive, yeah? There's no way that any of those should be negative. Now, of course, this is a guess, not a guess, it's a well-educated, almost correct guess, but we need to verify that it's correct by distributing and double-checking. So if I did go 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. 3x times 2, that's positive 6x. Positive 2 times 3, that's another positive 6x. Positive 2 times positive 2 is positive 4. The middle terms, when you add 6x and 6x, it really will give you that middle term 12x at the top. So we have verified it. We're 100% right. Yay? Okay, let's try this next one here. Um, do I have a perfect square term in the front? Yes. Do I have a perfect square term in the back? Yes. So we might be able to jump right in and square root those suckers and get our answer, right? So what is the square root of 25x squared? 5 with an x, right? So put a 5x and a 5x. What's the square root of 36? 6. Put a 6 right there, a 6 over here. Now what signs do you think will belong here if you want a positive 36 at the end and when you combine like terms, when distributing, you need a negative sign in the middle. A negative and a negative. So this is our best guess, but it's super important to verify because this is not actually the answer, right? A lot of us are going to be so uh, rushed during a quiz. Yeah, exactly. This is not the answer. That's why it's so important to double check it. That's why I put it here on purpose. 5x times 5x, 25x squared. So far, so good. 5x times negative 6 is negative 30x. And then negative 6 times 5x is another negative 30x, and negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. But when I combine the middle terms, you end up with negative 60x. And as you can see, this guy, this guy up here is not a negative 60x, so not even close to it. So this is actually wrong. It doesn't work, right? And you're supposed to try uh, a different method, like multiplying a times c, but it's a huge number. Anyways, the bottom line is this is not factorable. You put nf, not factorable. Or you could type in prime. That's also an acceptable answer. Not factorable or prime. Let's move on to this last one. 64x squared plus 16x plus 1. Uh, do we have a perfect square term in the front? Yes. yes. Do we have a perfect square term in the back? Yes. yes. So because we have those perfect square terms, maybe you could square root them and plug them into your answer format. What is the square root of 64x squared? 8x. 8x. What's the square root of 1? 1. one. What signs belong in here? Yeah, everything's positive, so yeah, plus, plus. And if you were to distribute 8 times 8, x times x is 64x squared. 8 times 8x times 1 is 8x. 1 times 8x is another 8x. And when you add those 8x's together, it'll give you 16x in the middle, so we know we did it right. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't really like perfect square quadratic trinomials because you do need to verify, right? We verified here, and it didn't work out. You do need to verify to see if it actually works. But when you have a perfect square binomial, in other words, if you have the difference of two perfect square terms, if you have the difference of two perfect square terms, then it will work. You don't have to verify anything, okay? But if you have a plus sign, it won't work. It has to be a minus. And let's jump right in to show you. Like instead of, I mean, you could think of it the old school way put an x there and an x there and think what times what is your c value negative 49 that if you combine together is your b value which is nothing. What times what is negative 49 that if you add together is nothing? Uh, positive 7 and negative 7, right? Or what I want you to do today just to practice is to look at your first term. Is it a perfect square term? Yes. Your first term is a perfect square term. Is your last term a perfect square term? Yes. So the square root of x squared, that is x, the square root of 49, that is 7. And then your signs, 
in order for you to end up with a, a negative 49 at the end, yeah, it has to be a negative 7 and a positive 7, or a positive and a negative. It doesn't matter as long as they're different. It doesn't matter which, if you put the positive first or the negative first? It doesn't matter if you put the positive or the negative first as long as your signs are different. So um, let's move on to another one, like this one right here, 81x squared minus 16. So do we have a perfect square term in the front? Yes. Do we have a perfect square term at the back? Yes. So could we square root them and just plug them into our answer format? Well, what is the square root of 81x squared? 9x. What is the square root of 16? 4. And because there's no middle term, because your 16 is a negative 16, you have to put 1 plus 1 minus. It doesn't matter which one's plus, which one's minus, as long as the signs are different. Um, I, I, just to verify this, even though we don't need to verify, um, when we distribute 9x times 9x, we'll get the 81x squared. And when I go 9x times positive 4, that'll be a positive 36x. And then when I go negative 4 times 9x, that'll be a negative 36x. That's why it's so important to have different signs, because the positive 36 and the negative 36x's will eliminate. That's why there's no middle term. Okay. Now, if you have a plus sign, you will not be able to do this. All right. It's just you, right off the bat. It's not a difference of two squares right there. It's adding two squares so that you can't factor that. It just doesn't work. Right. Prime. That's prime. Um, like even if you did try, like let's say you're like, oh, uh, this is a perfect square term. That's six X. And this is a perfect square term. That's 20. That's a five the square to 25 is five. And then you start thinking of the signs. How are you going to end up with a positive 25? It's either going to be a positive 5 times a positive 5 or a negative 5 times a negative 5. Either way, the middle terms will not cancel out. The only way they'll cancel out is if they're opposite signs. Okay. So th this is just not factorable. Again, an F or prime. So we would accept prime or NF? Yeah, either one's fine. Or you could even write out not factorable. No, nah, type in NF. It's quicker and faster. Um, how about this last one? Do we have a difference of two squares? Yep, the square to that is 11x. And the square to 1 is 1 and 1. And what about the signs? One positive, one negative. Oh, wait, I forgot the 11x over here. My bad. Anyways, yep, that's it. So it's pretty easy, yeah. Um, at the end of it all, if you have a perfect square term in the first position and in the last position, whether it's a trinomial or binomial, you square root them, plug them into your factored form, uh, answer format, and then think about the signs that belong there, right? <clears throat> now, if you're thinking, why the heck are we even factoring? Again, factoring is great to get multiplication when you're solving an equation. And why do you want multiplication? To be able to apply a zero product property, okay? So, for example, I'm actually going to do this one down here first. And I would like you guys to, to do this. Go ahead and copy this one down. Um, you see, normally when they say solve, we think get x by itself on one side, right? Get x by itself on one side. And we actually could get x by itself on the first one, but not on the second one, because we have two different types of x's on the second one. So on the second one, it, you can't get x by itself. So what we're going to do is move everything to one side. We're going to add 4. We're going to add 4. And you're just going to rewrite it. 9x squared minus 12x plus 4 equals 0. Now, if I could factor this, then I'll be able to get a binomial times a binomial equaling 0, which means I could split them and set each of those binomials equal to 0 using zero product property. Um, the thing is, the a value is not 1. So you're probably thinking, maybe I could use that long process of a times c, then make a list of the multiples of the answer of 36 that combine together to give me B, and then you could plug it in. But it's a lot faster. Instead of doing that long method, is to recognize that there's a perfect square term here, perfect square term there, and you could actually square root them. Okay, So square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 4 is 2. And let's, yeah, thinking of the signs, I need this final 2 when I distribute over here. This 2 times 2 will give me a positive 4. Or maybe a negative 2 times negative 2 will also give me a positive 4. So the signs have to be the same. They're either both minuses to give me a positive 4 or both pluses to give me a positive 4. 
they're going to be both negative because that's the only way that when you combine like terms, you're going to end up with a negative 12 in the middle, if we're lucky. So let's do that. Let's put a minus there and a minus there equals 0, still over there. Just to verify, 3x times 3x, 9x. 3x times negative 2, negative 6x. Negative 2 times 3x is another negative 6x. And yeah, negative 6 and negative 6 will give us that middle term right there, negative 12x. So we know we factored it correctly. Are you with me? Okay, so let me erase this. That was just verification. Okay, now what I'm going to do is use zero product property to split them and solve. 3x minus 2, that could equal 0. And 3x minus 2, that could also equal 0. It's the same equation, so you're going to get the same answer, right? We're going to go plus, plus, plus 2, plus 2. We're going to end up with 3x equaling 2. And then you're going to divide by 3, divide by 3. So your answer is x equals 2 thirds. Okay, so you just type in x equals 2 thirds, and that's your final answer. So so you don't have to write, you should not write x equals 2 thirds two times. Now, if there were two different answers, then yeah, for sure, type in x equals 2 thirds and x equals negative 3 or whatever the other answer is. But right here, you end up with the same answer twice. That's why I didn't even solve this guy over here, because it's going to be the same answer. It's the same equation. Anywho, let's look at this uh, other one. You see, I could, I, you could do the square root situation of the first one and the second one because of the difference of two perfect square terms. So I already know it's going to factor to x plus 7, x minus 7, right? But I could also show you an alternate method of doing this, the old school method. What was the old school method of just getting x by itself? Now, the reason why I could not get this one x by itself is because I had two different types of x's. I had a regular x and an x squared. Right here, there's only one single x. There's no more x's anywhere. So if I wanted to, I could get x by itself by adding 49. Canceling, adding 49 to the other side of the equal sign. I'd have x squared equals 49. Now, think about this. How do you get rid of something? How did I get rid of that minus 49 by doing the opposite, plus 49? So right here, I have an x squared, and I don't want the square. I want to get rid of the square. So to get rid of a power of 2, to get rid of a square, I'm going to apply the opposite of a square, which is a square root. Square root. So if I apply a square root here and a square root there, then I'll have my answer x equals. Now there's one little detail in math, though. When you apply a square root when solving an equation, you have to put a plus or minus in front of your answer 7. Now that just simply means that there's two answers, x equals positive 7 and x equals negative 7. Okay. So whenever you apply a square root on an equation, uh, you would have to put a plus or minus in front of your answer. Okay. So this is the method of solving by getting x by itself, by getting rid of the square, by applying the opposite of square, which is square root to both sides. But you have to remember that you put a plus or minus in front of your answer. Um, if I wanted to, I could have gone back to the original x squared minus 49, and I could have uh, factored this difference of two perfect square terms. So I could have gone parenthesis, 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 parenthesis equals 0. Uh, the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 49 is 7. So you have an x and a 7, an x and a 7. Now, since there is no middle term, and since that is a negative 49, then those signs have to be different, 1 plus, 1 minus, giving you your factored form x plus 7 times x minus 7, which means with zero product property, you'll be able to split them and solve x plus 7 equals 0 and x minus 7 equals 0, giving you two answers, subtracting 7, subtracting 7, x equals negative 7, and also plus 7 plus 7, x equaling positive 7, which is the same thing as x equals plus or minus 7. You got your positive 7 there and your negative 7 there. So two different ways of solving this same equation. So if you ever do have one single x, you could isolate that x and then apply a square root, but you have to put a plus or minus in front of your answer. It might be worth the, uh, talking about why that's true. Like, think about this simple equation. Something squared equals 9. Something squared equals 9, all right? 3 squared equals 9, so x equals 3, right? But also a negative 3. If you plug that in, 
in with parentheses, negative 3 times itself gives you positive 9 as well. So you see there's two answers for any square root or any uh, quadratic equation they most of the time. Huh? But they both work. Uh, they both work, yeah. And, and the idea is when you apply a square root, all you got to do is put a plus or minus in front of your answer. That way it does say x equals positive 3 and equals negative 3. This is like stating two answers, x equals positive 3 and negative 3. So again, let me, let me repeat for a third time. When you apply a square root when solving an equation, you have to put a plus or minus in front of your answer. Was your plus and minus or minus? It's, it said plus or minus, but technically it means that, yeah, two answers, positive and negative. How would you type on the computer? Um, on the computer, I would just type in x equals 3 comma x equals negative 3. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much wrapping up the, lep the lesson. We have perfect square quadratic trinomials and perfect square quadratic binomials. All you got to do is square root the front, square root the back, plug it into your factor form answer format, then think about the signs. Same thing here. Square root them, plug them into your factor form answer format, then think about the signs according to the signs, right? Um, if we look at our worksheet that I'm about to pass out, you're getting this worksheet, and it's two-sided. One side's the 8.8, .8, the other one's the 8.9. I apologize for the long lesson. Um, the 8.8 .8 is just the difference of two squares. The 8.9 is perfect square quadratic trinomials. Um, we're going to work on this for the next couple of days. If we look at uh, the 8.8 .8 side, um, those are the difference of two squares. So 1 through 15, which one could I not do? Just by looking at the signs, if you need difference of two squares, right? You cannot do four because that's not a difference of two squares. So right off the bat, you know that number four is what? Prime. Prime. Or you could just say not NF, right? Not factorable. Okay? So yeah, number four is prime. So I do think that some of these questions are kind of ridiculous because they don't give them to you perfectly. Like, let's say, I don't know, pick one. Eight looks weird. Right? It looks really, really weird. Before we even start, what's the first method of factoring that we learned? GCF. That's the first method you should always try. Right? Always try the GCF first. So what is in common with 32 and 8y squared? Negative 8. A negative 8, right? Uh, or, or, uh, or positive 8, whatever. But if you want to go negative 8, that's fine. So you can pull out a negative 8, parenthesis. What would be left over? A minus 4, because negative 8 times negative 4 gives you a positive 32. And then over here, a plus y squared, correct? Yeah. Plus y squared. Now, like you said, it's not in order. It's probably better to rewrite it in order. Yeah, the negative 8 is the GCF. We kept keep it outside. But we do have a positive y squared and a minus 4. And now on the inside, we do have a difference of two perfect squared terms. So you would square root, square root, plug it into your factored form answer format. Or, since there is no more number in front of y squared, you could think parenthesis, 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 y, y. Think what times what is negative 4, that if you add together is a middle term, which is 0, because there is no middle term. So that would be a positive 2 and a negative 2, right? Um, positive 2, negative 2. Or you could have thought square rooting. Square root that, it'll give you a y, y. Square root 4 to give you 2, 2. Signs have to be different because there's no middle term because it has to be a negative 4 at the very end. Okay. Don't forget to bring down the minus 8 at the end. Okay. So the GCF was minus the minus 8 that we pulled out at the beginning. Um, so, with that, so with that, we can also put the prime too, right? Well, this is, this is not prime. Um, this is, it is factorable. We just factored it. And not, not only that, like that minus 8 didn't have to be a minus 8. That minus 8, you could have pulled out a positive 8 if you wanted to, right? Yeah. So check this out. If I would have pulled out a positive 8, then I would have had a positive 4 with a minus y squared. And you could have still thought of it, even though it's out of order, you could have still thought of it this way, where, okay, what is the square root of 4? That's 2. And what is the square root of y squared? That's y. And one would have to be plus and one would have to be minus with the 8 out here in the front. So this is technically the same answer as that. The only thing is that these guys 
are out of order. Wait, so if it's a binomial, you have to have greater than 9? Uh, if it's a binomial, a perfect square binomial, it has to be a difference of two perfect square terms. A difference. It does have to be a minus. If it's a plus sign, like on number 4, you could just say not factorable. And F, or you could say prime. You cannot do it. Okay? Uh, let's take a look at number 10. You might freak out if you have two different letters, right? But the first type of factoring you ever learned was what? GCF. So what could I pull out of both terms right here? Could I pull out a 4? 4 times what is 18? No. Uh-uh. 6? No. I mean, I could at least pull out a 2, right? If I pull out a 2, what will I have left on the inside? 16 T squared minus 9 u squared. Now look at that red binomial on the inside of the parentheses. This is a difference of two perfect square terms. So I am going to square root them and plug them into my answer, for, for answer form format. Uh, the square root of... Yeah, the 2 is out in the side and the 2 will be out here in, in the front on our answer. But what is the square root of 16 t squared? 4 t. 4 t. How about uh, the square root of 9u squared? 3u. 3u. Now, how about those signs that belong here and here? They have to be different. 1 plus, 1 minus. Or 1 minus, 1 plus. It doesn't really matter as long as they're different. And this is your fully factored form of number 10. Okay. And yes, when you type it in, type it in without, parent without uh, spaces between your terms, and it should work where if you type in a minus first or a plus, as long as they're different, it should give you credit on the quizzes assignment that we do next. Just real quick to, to finish this off, let's flip the paper over so you can see the other section, 8.9, and right here you have the perfect square trinomials, right? 8.8 .8, perfect square binomials, which is a difference of two squares, 8.9 perfect square trinomials. So on all of these, like number five, if you have a perfect square term in the front and a perfect square term in the back, maybe you'll be able to square root it. The square root of 4d squared is 2d. And the square root of 1 is 1. And they both have to be negative because that's the only way that you're going to end up with a positive 1 and a negative 4 in the middle, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And when you do distribute, and when you double check it, because technically you should double check it, 2d times 2d, 4d squared. 2d times negative 1 is negative 2d. Negative 1 times 2d is another negative 2d. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And of course, the middle terms do end up giving you that minus 4d when you combine this negative 2d with that negative 2d. So we verified that it is correct. Of course, the only thing you type in is the uh, binomial times binomial, which is this guy right here. 2d minus 1 times 2d minus 1. So that's what's on the back side. And now I'm finally going to stop, unless you want to see another. No, you're like, no, please stop. All right, we're done. We'll pick it up tomorrow.